fall of the Berlin Wall was uh, an iconic moment in, I was in high school, and I had grown up with a best friend who had lived behind the Iron Curtain, uh, a young kid who was a son of a dissident from Ceausescu's Romania, a particularly brutal dictatorship behind the Iron Curtain. And so to be in high school uh, on the verge of going off to college and to see the Berlin Wall come down and the possibilities it meant, it, for me, it was a total inspiration. It was both something that I could understand what it meant personally for people like my friend who was from Romania, but it also became a singular moment for me to think about what I wanted to do with my life and to inspire me to understand the power of freedom, the power of, a, of the United States standing by people trying to have a better say for their lives, a bit of dignity, um, and really provided me a sense of, of direction, I think, as I thought about what I was going to study when I went to college, how I would focus my own career. Um, and it gave me just a real sense of hope of how the United States uh, supporting people like those people who came over the, the barbed wire on the Austro-Hungarian border, who came over the Berlin Wall, um, how we could be a force for good by standing with average people who wanted a better lives for their families. That correlation between what they wanted, freedom and dignity for themselves, and American interests, that coming together was really compelling for me as a, a North Star for where I wanted my career to go. I mean, here at the Atlantic Council, uh, we've been a force behind the idea of the United States working constructively with friends and allies, as a force behind the advance of the Europe whole and free, as a force of recognizing that there is unfinished business from 1989. If you look, it's still some of the uncertainty and ambivalence in the Western Balkans or what's happening in Ukraine and Georgia, not to mention Russia. And I think if we remember the power that we saw uh, on the streets of Berlin in 1989 across Central and Eastern Europe and understand that in our own way we can shape that future through the work we do, uh, it can keep us focused on what the possibilities and opportunities are and not to be discouraged by all the challenges and problems that we see in the world today. So I think, uh, you know, we've been really focused on where there is unfinished business in the Western Balkans and Europe's East, but I think importantly it has to do with a sense of ourselves and confidence in our own societies and open market democracies is the best pathway to security and prosperity for people. And if we can match and stand by that as part of what we're proud of and as part of our foreign policy, um, I think that's how we can be true to the legacy of 1989. Look, the world's changed dramatically, remarkably, and we have to acknowledge that. And the same policies and approaches that worked for the past 25 years are not going to be the same that we pursue for the next 25 years. But that's part of the Atlantic Council's work. How can we think of adapting and reshaping the global system in a way that's commensurate with our interests and our values? How can we challenge ourselves not to just cookie cutter copy the policies of the past, but ad to adapt them to a, a, a vastly different future where we see stronger autocracies today. And I think that's one of the challenges we face, but it, it's what makes our work rewarding. I'm really, I'm really proud that the Atlantic Council has used this year to celebrate, you know, at the beginning of the year in April, we celebrated the 70th anniversary of the NATO Alliance. This summer, we had a signature conference and report on the U.S. Central European relationship to recognize former adversaries now as allies and what that really means uh, for Central European allies. And now in November, the commemoration of the fall of the Berlin Wall, the centrality of what this means as Germany as a force for the free world. Uh, if you look across the year, the Atlantic Council has been able to connect the dots and to bring together all of these commemorations and celebrations, but not just to be looking towards the past. More importantly, we've used this as a time to really take stock and think about now what is our agenda for the future what are the challenges we face, and what, how do we need to put this incredible relationship, this incredible alliance to work on solving these problems of tomorrow?